Hi, this is Kerala again. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm in New York and the snow is up, almost up to the rooftops. I'm on the sixth floor, but that's neither here nor there. Do you remember we were talking about uh, how you write a good college level academic essay? And I talked first about structure. Well, I've done a number, number of videos on structure. Okay. And, but it's not just structure. Remember, I use this as a metaphor for the, for the essay. And the essay has four legs, right? And if either leg, if any of these legs are not, if any of these legs is not um, steady, the essay has problems. So I talked about structure and I looked at how do you do a persuasive essay, how do you do a compare and contrast essay in which you're trying to persuade me of something, how do you do a cause and effect essay, once again you're trying to persuade me of something. Because I always like to do these kind of essays in which let's say you're doing a process essay or cause and effect or whatever, but put an extra layer on it where you're forced to take a position on something, you're forced to argue. But your structure could be fine. It could be absolutely fine. But if your grammar is not in mind, that can be a problem. So now we're going to talk about grammar. Now, I've already talked a little bit about grammar in another video in which I look at parts of speech. So I'm going to erase this and we're going to talk about grammar. And if you remember from the other video, I talked about grammar and I talked about parts of speech and there's eight parts of speech. The most important is the verb. And the verb is the most important because without a verb, you have no sentence. Okay. But you've got to know certain things about verbs because verbs have a lot of different characteristics that are very important. One characteristic, oops, is whether the verb, so I'm talking about verbs here, this is the first, this is why I say the first part of speech is the verb, not the noun, most definitely not the adjective or pronoun, it's the verb. One characteristic that you have to be very aware of is whether the verb is regular versus irregular. And I talked about this a little bit in the other video. And if you speak Spanish, or if you speak French, or Portuguese, or Italian, you would recognize the word regular, or regular in Spanish, in English, and irregular, that's Spanish, um, or it's English, irregular. And the word ir means not. And in Spanish, for example, you have the word regla. And regla means something that happens regularly, or uh, a ruler, una regla. Okay, so... Just to, just to give you some um, roots and some understanding of the word, regular verb means a verb that follows the rules. And an irregular verb is a verb which does not follow the rule. And because it does not follow the rule, what must you do? You must memorize. So these are verbs that you must memorize. Now, the majority of verbs, the overwhelming majority of verbs in English are regular, which in a sense is good news. Okay, especially when a verb comes into English from another language, it normally comes into the language, and I can't think of any exceptions, but there are always exceptions, but frankly, I can't think of any. Most of the time, if not all of the time, these verbs come in as regular verbs. Okay. So, the majority of verbs in English are regular. All you have to do is learn the rule and you know how to conjugate the verb. To conjugate a verb is that you put a verb in different persons. For example, I'm going to conjugate a regular verb in the present tense, in a simple present tense or the present indicative, and it's the verb to talk. All right? Now, this is, I'm talking about the present indicative because there's about, maybe about 15 tenses. And the tense means the time in which the action took place. So you have a verb to talk. I'm going to conjugate it. That's no problem. Do I, you, we, they talk. Then he, she, it talks. So how do you teach this? Well, first, 
When you see the verb to talk, that's in the infinitive form. We're going to look at verb forms in another video. You just remove the to and you bring down the verb itself here. And then you have I talk, you talk, we talk, they talk. Right? So for example, I talk to my mother, you talk to your mother, we talk to our mother, they talk to their mother. Then you have, you take that same verb, bring it down here with he, she, and it. But because he, she, and it, for regular verbs, must end in S. I don't care what people say on the streets. In correct English, it must end in S. So it's he, she, it talks. So I can give you any verb. I can give you the verb and see if I can pronounce it correctly. Discombobulate. To discombobulate. Now you say, I don't know what that means. No problem. You just put the word to and discombobulate. Let me see if I spell it correctly. Right? Even though it's a long word, even though it, um, you might not understand its meaning, the minute I tell you that it's regular, all you do is this. Once again, the, the, the two is already crossed out. And you take the word discombobulate and you put it here. I discombobulate, you, we, they discombobulate. Now, you take that same word and you bring it down here. And you just put the discombobulate, but you add the S because it's he, she, and it discombobulates. Okay. Now, that's for regular verb. So as long as you know the verb is regular, depending on the tense, obviously, because I'm only showing you the present indicative tense, right? you're able to conjugate it. So you don't have to memorize that verb and how you conjugate. Now, like I said, the majority of verbs in English are regular. I would say maybe 90%, but I haven't really done a study on exactly what the percentage is. But here's the twist. Here's the trick. Although the majority of verbs in English are not, did you hear me, are not irregular, the majority of verbs in English are not irregular, the majority of the most important verbs, the most common verbs that you use, they are irregular. Now, a lot of them are not irregular in the present indicative. The present indicative tense is more or less a tense in which the overwhelming majority of verbs are regular. The overwhelming majority. The problem comes in when you're talking in the simple past or the preterite. That's the same thing, preterite or simple past. Like, for example, what you did yesterday. Yesterday, I went to the park, right? Or if you're using the past participle, the past participle is really not a tense, it's a verb form. A past participle would be, for example, I have, I have, you hear that have, and I'm going to give you the verb to go, because yesterday I said I went to the park yesterday, I have, and let's, what's the past participle of the verb to go, gone, I have gone to the park. Let me just give you an example of an irregular verb, the most important verb in the English language, the verb to be. The verb to be is so irregular, so irregular, that even the word be is not there. So it's I am, you, we, they, are, he, she, it, is. Now, this is the most irregular verb because it's, it's, I think it's the only verb in English that has three different forms. One for I, one for you, we, they, and another form for he, she, and it. Normally, the, an irregular verb would be, a more normal irregular verb would be the verb to go or the verb to do. Oops. Or the verb to have. Let me show you these quickly. Here... For I, you, we, they, they are not irregular. They're quite regular. All you do is get rid of the two, and it's I go, I do, and I have. So it's I, you, we, they go, I, you, we, they do, I, you, we, they have. 
The irregularity many times in English is here for he, she, and it. It's he goes, G-O-E-S, the S has the sound of the Z. He, she, it does. Okay, the S has the sound of the Z. You don't write a Z, right? But it's D-O-E-S. That's what the irregularity, you're adding an E where normally an E, where you only add an S. Now the verb to have is irregular, and it's he, she, it has. That has, but has. This S has the sound of the S. So once again, very quickly, verbs are the most important part of, of, the, of uh, the English language. A verb is the part of the language you need in order to have a complete sentence. You have different, you have verb tenses, verb forms, but today we were just looking at uh, whether a verb is regular or irregular. I showed you an example of a regular verb in the present indicative. I had here to discombobulate, but I showed you with the verb to talk. And the regular verb follows the rule. The irregular verb, oh, once again, the regular verb, the overwhelming majority in English language, the overwhelming majority of verbs are regular. An irregular verb, I don't know, maybe 10% of the language, 20%, I'm not exactly sure, but many of the most important verbs in the English language are irregular. And because it's irregular, what do you have to do? You have to memorize. You must memorize the verb. Okay. And I gave you an example. I gave you the verb to be. I am, you, we, they are, he, she, it is. I also gave you the example of the verb to go, to do, and to have. Once again, the most important verbs in English are irregular. But most of the time, it's not in the present indicative they're irregular. They're irregular in the simple past, like I went to the park for the verb to go, or in the past participle, um, which is not a verb tense, it's a verb form, I have gone. So we're going to continue looking at verbs because verbs are very important in our next video. But this is Corrala Ficklin at, Corrala Ficklin McLean, excuse me, at welcome, W-Y-L-C-O-M-E. Welcome, W-Y-L-C-O-M-E dot com. Thank you very much.